While everyone has understandably been focused on the pandemic over the past year, there's another crisis that experts and community members say is getting worse. It affects all of us, and I, I just want people to understand that and just know that it's something that needs to be addressed and talked about more openly. New data shows drug overdose deaths reached record levels last year. Ray Daniel is here live with a closer look at the numbers and the people impacted by this. Ray. That's right, Lindsay. In 2020, we lost more than 93,000 people to drug overdoses in the U.S. That's the highest number ever recorded, according to the CDC. It's a nearly 30 percent jump over 2019. Missouri had nearly a 20 percent increase and Kansas jumped 24 percent over 2019. The problem really started to escalate last April, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. Several states are already on pace to break the record again this year. This problem doesn't only affect those dealing with addiction, it affects their family, friends and neighbors in the community. We talked to one Kansas City man who knows that impact firsthand. Hey, this is Justin from the Generation Y podcast. I hope you're all doing great tonight. Every week, Justin Evans explores the world of true crime. Tonight's case, we're going to be talking about a minor who killed his best friend. And the circumstances behind each story. In my podcast, I do like to bring up mental health, addiction, and those things, and try to inform people while I'm doing it. I just didn't know I was going to have something so close impact me so recently. April 8th, my mother called me and told me my sister was dead. A heroin overdose, but the autopsy revealed another ingredient. I finally got my sister's autopsy report back and showed fentanyl. I don't think she stood a chance. Justin believes his sister Megan didn't know the drugs contained fentanyl, a scenario that's becoming increasingly common. I just think everybody should be more aware of this growing epidemic. Dr. Rupa Sethi runs the opioid treatment program at the University of Kansas Health System. She says they've had an influx of patients over the past year. The majority of them report getting opioids illegally often in the form of a pill called M30. It is an oxycodone uh, tablet, but it is mixed with fentanyl. Dr. Sethi says some people know it contains fentanyl, but many do not, and that can be lethal. If a patient takes it and he has never been exposed to an opiate before, that means that they have taken something that's 100 times or 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine and can have a potential for an overdose. Experts say the increase in drugs laced with fentanyl combined with the stress of the pandemic drove the surge in overdose deaths last year. I, I think the pandemic absolutely impacted everybody's mental state, uh, amplified all of our problems and limited people's opportunities to find work, to get out, and to find alternatives than to just use again. If there's any lesson to be learned from tragedy, Justin says he hopes the world can find more compassion for those struggling. I think people think addiction is just something that someone chooses to do. I don't think they ever consider their background, how they got to the point they're at. I just think you should come with empathy and not judgment because it affects everybody. The rise in fentanyl has been a problem for several years now, but experts say it's really reaching critical levels. In May, the Drug Enforcement Administration issued a warning to the whole country about counterfeit pills containing fentanyl. They say if you're getting pills from anywhere except a doctor or pharmacy, you're, quote, playing Russian roulette with your life. What a quote, Ray. If someone knows they or someone they know needs help, what can they do? Give us some resources here. There are several resources all across Kansas City. Um, you know, as you heard in the story, University of Kansas Health System has a treatment program specifically for those addicted to opioids. They offer several methods that still treat pain while also addressing the patient's opioid addiction. You can also reach out to First Call KC. They have programs for people who are addicted as well as programs to help their loved ones cope. There's also a national helpline that can refer you to a resource that best fits your needs. That number is on your screen right now, 1-800-662-HELP. Now, they also have a website with a search tool. Just type in your city or area code, and it'll bring up all the addiction and mental health treatment centers near you. We'll be sure to post a link to this tool over on our website at kshb.com. Back to you all.
All right, Ray, thank you very much. All across the country, state leaders are aiming to hold drug makers and distributors accountable. Last week, a group of state attorneys general announced a proposed $26 billion settlement involving three drug distributors, McKesson, Cardinal Health, and Amerisource Bergen, as well as drug maker Johnson & Johnson. They are accused of fueling the crisis by downplaying the risk of addiction and recklessly distributing opioids. Missouri could receive nearly $500 million in that. Kansas also expected to get some of that money, but the exact amount has not been announced just yet. To finalize the settlement, at least 44 states have to sign on to the deal, and they have 30 days to do so. We'll be back.